Yo Wagwan, hope you're having a great day. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make an R&B trap type beat. The kind of beat you'd hear Post Malone, Bryson Tiller, Party Next Door, even The Weeknd jumping on. And we're going to be showing you how to do that in FL Studio. So stay tuned. If you don't know who I am, I'm Jay Carteray from jaycarteray.com teaching you how to be better at music online marketing and online business. This is the number one spot for musicians and creatives that don't wanna be starving artists. So if that sounds like you, this is the place to be. Go ahead, subscribe, turn on notifications, check out the rest of the content we have here on the channel. And in the description, you'll see links to uh, kits, templates, that sort of stuff that will help you on your music production journey as well. So definitely be checking that out. But let's get in to the video. Now, what we're gonna be doing is we're going to be walking through one of my beats and the big thing that you need to remember about these sorts of beats is basically just keeping it simple like that's really where it's at and once you keep it simple and you basically you know don't try and add too much and you only add what's necessary you'll find yourself creating the beat that you basically want to create so we're going to look into we're going to go step by step into the different elements of this song and basically we always start or well, i always start with the chords i don't know what you start with let me know in the comment section down below but i always start with the chords so these are the chords we have for this particular song and i'm gonna play these generally i'd have this in this octave i believe let me play this back yeah and then after that i'd press control and a and then control and up to move it to a higher octave in order to turn it into an audio file and then pitch it down because it gives me the nice um what's it called the the ambiance the vibe that i like to go for but let's listen to it in the original octave so you can hear what's going on And the pad that I'm using here is Afterthought Signs. Quite like this pad, it's nice and smooth. Generally does what needs to be done. And that's that, like that's, that's the main pad of the song. As you can see, this is the pad up here. It's just going through the whole song. I'll play it to you so you can hear what it actually sounds like in the song. Let's actually bring that back there. I'm unsure if I just played you the the song part or the actual thing from here. But as you can hear when I play it from uh, this pattern, it's a bit clearer. When we pitch it down, it's more muffly. It's basically got the vibe that I like to go for in these trap R&B type songs. I like the melodic parts to really take the background, the drums to take the foreground and the singer to take most of the foreground or rapper or whatever. So we've got a few other elements. We've got a few other melodic elements that we're going to go through. So let's go ahead and go through those. So this is, I believe, the main melodic element of the track. Let me hear this back. Yeah, so this is the main melodic element. I believe this is used in the latter end of the verse and the pre-chorus. So let's play this back. So as you can see, not too much going on here. And what I've done is I've basically pressed Control A and then Alt and R to randomize the velocity so they're not all stagnant, they're not all the same. 
I believe I did that for the pad as well for the chords. Let me quickly check. Yeah, yeah, I did do that for the chords. And I did use Captain Chords to create this chord progression. I didn't use Captain Chords suggested chords or anything like that. I just like to go into Captain Chords so it's easy for me to get out the chords that I want to use so I don't have to you know, pencil it in or whatever. And if I want to change it to like an augmented chord or a seventh or anything, it's really easy for me to do that through here. But these are the actual chords for the song. So we've got two, three, five, three, what? I, this doesn't seem right. I don't think this is actually the progression. I think the reason why this is what's there now is because I changed the progression to the relevant minors. So relative minors, my bad. So yeah, that's this isn't the right progression. <laughs> um, let me quickly find the right progression for you because I don't know if I've been mistakenly leading you down the wrong road with my other progressions in the other um, songs. So I, I apologize if that's the... Okay, unfortunately, the progression which I thought was in my um, music book, I thought I noted it down, is not actually there. Let me uh, mute this. Let's just let's just go to the actual chords because it'd be easier to just see over there. Now I do assume, yeah, I do assume that the bass notes are the correct bass notes for the chords. So we got one seven. And then one seven, it's basically one seven one seven. Uh, very very simple chords here. I believe those are the correct numbers, but off the top of my head, I I can't remember. <laughs> but the um, then we've got I believe this is another pad. Oh, this is a yeah, this is a pad, not up. So let's solo this. No, this is a different chord. This isn't the same chord. So this is one seven and then maybe one five. Maybe this isn't even one seven. Maybe it's one four, one five. Not a hundred percent sure. Sorry about that. But you know, you can see the chords there. Ah, this is the different one. My bad. Oh no, this is the D chord. One of those is the D chord. Yeah, this is the D chord. So it's one seven four seven, I believe off the top of my head. I think that's what we got going on here, but I, I don't know if that's like super important to you. So I don't know, we don't really need to go super deep into that. But basically what I have here is another pad that basically just adds uh, higher, higher um, frequencies to this. So this pad could be used like when I'm trying to emphasize what's going on or whatever. And I just showed you what pad it is, this kill switch and chill. So this can be used for like the latter end of the verse or for the chorus to show that we've got more going on. So this is what it sounds like again. And I just copied over the chords from the original pad and then i believe this is an arpeggio uh, up up Now this is the same pad as before, but I believe I just changed the chords. Yeah, I changed the chords to the relative minor chords to see if I could use this for like a bridge or something, which you see over here, but it didn't really sound that good. So I just left it out. So 
that's basically all the melodic elements in the track, uh, except for contact. So let's get to that. And then we do, what is this? Yeah, I think this, this is the minor, relative minor chords. Yeah. So we do have contact in here. which does that and i'll show you what patch that is in exhale my bad i just said contact like that's where it was it's exhale in contact which i really like to just add some vocals to it and then we've also got the synth bass of course which basically just follows the chord notes, the chord bass notes, but like I, I kind of syncopated it a little bit, not like super syncopated, but I just haven't got the synth bass going all throughout the track. So it's got a little bit more rhythm. So this is what it sounds like. And I really like that. <laughs> like, it's really cool. So uh, I guess we'll just bring that right back where it was. And then, yeah, that's all the melodic elements. Then we've got drums, which aren't too complicated. And we basically got this snare as our clap. So we've got the main snare on each, you know, half beat. And then we've also got some lead up snares, you know, the typical trap. And this is what it sounds like. Then we got hi hats, which I'll leave the claps on and stuff so you can kind of hear it in context. Very simple. Then we have, did I have, I don't think I did open hats. I do have another snare, but I don't think I actually used this. Let me check. No, I don't think I used this in the beat. I think I just stayed with the main snare thing. Let me quickly check. Yeah, because it wasn't necessary. I decided that I think I changed this snare and was like, yeah, that can work. So then we got some perks, which basically just add to the drums, just adds a little bit more rhythm. And I think this is like our only perk. And then we've also got that happening at the end, like the very end bar. So then we've got the 808s, which is basically doing the same thing as the sub bass, but I don't think I included the 808 in the end song. So no point getting too deep into that, but I just wanted to try it out just in case the 808 was a good sound for this beat, but it wasn't. Then we've got the kick basically, and that's pretty much the end of the drums. As I told you before, that five beat. That five beat gap, like really gives you that nice bounce. And also I haven't, I forgot to tell you about tempos. Generally when you're making a, a 
R&B trap kind of beat. You want to be from like 120 to 130. Like sometimes you can go over that. Like I've got another beat that's like 144 and it's like really, really nice. And it's a R&B trap type of beat. But generally you're going to want to be like 120 to 130 and that'll get you like the right groove. And this is basically the beat, like just these elements. And you don't really need more than that. So let me play the beat for you so you can see what's going on. And what is this? It's the master track as well. That's not good. Did that just move a little bit? Okay, it wasn't in the right place anyways. Bring that down here. So basically, let me know what tempo you, you usually start with when you're making beats in the comment section down below. Remember to go to jcarteray.com forward slash free loops to grab that free loop kit. In the next video, you'll learn more about music, online marketing and online business. But without further ado, let me play this beat and yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Basically, remember this isn't mixed. And if you want to grab this beat, if you want to listen to it fully mixed and mastered, the link will be in the description down below. So yeah, peace out. Okay, everything's soloed, so that didn't work. My bad. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I mentioned this in my other video, but I obviously didn't mention it in this video. Generally, I like to like when I get a melody or when I get chords right and I've got the right sound and whatnot. First of all, I start out using keys because that's the best way to hear everything. But then when you've got the right thing, you want to um, like pitch it up an octave and then bounce it into audio and then pitch it down because it gives you that nice vibe and everything sounds more ambient basically because I like to make ambient beats. That's what we're doing over here. So. Let's listen to it. 